Have you ever come to the color page ready to color correct and just sat there and felt overwhelmed with the number of tools available to you, not knowing where to start or what to do? Well, get ready because I'm about to reveal four simple steps used by the pros that'll make your videos look mwah. And the beauty is these steps are repeatable on any footage from any camera. So the next time you go to the color page, you will be the man with the plan. When you start color correcting, identify what's called a hero frame or a master frame. The hero frame is a frame that is representative of the clip that you're trying to color correct. Right about here, every component that I can expect in that particular clip is present in this frame. So if I were to color correct on this frame, my entire clip would be correct. So step number one in your four step process is to identify and fix your blacks. So I'm going to call this node my black node and in this node we are going to do two things the first thing is to make sure that the blacks are neutral in color your blacks and your whites should not have any color casts in them and the way to do that is by first identifying the black points in this image these shadow areas here behind these chairs that looks black so if i were to pick this part at the back the shadow areas and i'm looking at my parade at the bottom You'll notice that the reds are elevated and the greens and the blues seem very similar. And you can identify that by the red circle is above the 512 line versus the green and the blue circles are already clipping that line, which means that the reds are elevated. So to fix the blacks, come to the lift wheel and start moving it away from the color that's already elevated. So in this case, the reds are elevated. So we need to push it towards the blues and the greens. So I'm just going to move it just a little bit it's not going to take too much to to neutralize this so, and pretty much that's that's it and there you go now my black points are neutralized and does not have a cast after you've neutralized the black points the second question to ask in the same note is at what exposure level should my black point be if i were there physically in that place these dark areas here are going to look really dark because she is sitting in sunlight which means that the darker parts are going to look very dark to our eyes so i'm quite comfortable bringing down the shadow areas even darker in order to do that come to the lift wheel and in this slider here start moving it down and this is very subjective so i've just brought it all the way down so that it starts clipping the zeros this is a before and this is an after this is a before and this is an after it's already run quite a bit to our image so after you've done the first step the second step is fixing your whites and we are really going to do the same two steps that we did for the blacks for the whites as well. So create a new node and call this the white node. And again, let's find a part of the image that's white and let's try to balance the colors. So very conveniently in this image, we have this white colored cup that we can use as our white reference. And if I hover over it, you'll see that on the parade, the blues and the greens are elevated and the reds are suppressed. What we can now do is we can balance the white points to be more neutral. To balance the white points, you would do it with the gains. So come to the gain wheel and start playing with the gain wheel so that it's neutralized. The greens are still elevated. So the reds are still a little low, too much blue. Okay, there you go. So I've now neutralized the whites. And if I hover over the cup, you'll see that the three circles are approximately in the same levels you do not have one color that's overpowering the other two colors. So this is a before and that's an after. That's a before, that's an after. You can see that a bit of reds are, have been introduced into the image. The next thing to do is to fix your midtones. So I'm going to create a new node and call this the midtones. And I'm going to find a neutral color. So take this chair's pipe at the back. That's a neutral gray. And if I hover over it, you will see that the greens are overpowering the reds and the blues. So let's fix that. Let's try to neutralize that gray and see what it looks like. In order to fix your midtones, you need to use your gamma wheel. And just for reference, I'm looking at this spike on the parade. So I'm going to try to balance those three. So come to the gamma and just play with it until that's neutral as well. And as you can see, it's starting to introduce more of the, uh, the rich reds and the pinks and the magentas into the image the image was very greenish to begin with so that's bringing more life into the image and the other thing that i'm noticing is that the entire image feels very bright i'm going to start decreasing the exposure of the midtones so a mantra to keep in mind is decrease your gamma increase your gain so i'm going to start decreasing my gamma and i'm just going to increase the gain to compensate making sure i'm not clipping anywhere 
One byproduct that you get by decreasing your exposure is that the saturation automatically increases. You can see that if I were to just increase it, the image loses saturation. But as I start decreasing it further, the image feels a lot more richer in color. And here's the before and here's the after. Here's the before, here's the after. The midtones fix has done quite a bit of change to the entire image. It's, it has kind of removed the greenish tones that we had and it's also increased the saturation and it's also made the, the image a lot more livelier than, than it wasn't earlier. I would usually do all these three steps within one node. These don't require three separate nodes. You can do this within one node. So I'm just gonna collapse them into a single compound node and I'm gonna call this my primaries. So this is really the first in the four step process. After you've done this, the second step is to fix your saturation. And, and the way you work with saturation is you start increasing the saturation until you've gone a little too far. Maybe that's a little too far. And then you start pulling back, maybe over here. I'm also keeping a look at my vector scope to make sure I'm not clipping anywhere. Now, if you do not know how to use a vector scope and use that to saturate an image, I have an in-depth tutorial into vector scopes that I've linked here, which some people are saying are the best vector scopes video that they've ever seen. So don't miss that and watch that after you finish with this video. Now, once you've done with your saturation, your next step is what I call custom curves. So your custom curves are going to be used to fix your contrast. So create another serial node, call this your contrast node and choose the curves tab. And in the three dots here, ensure that editable splines is selected. Now, once your editable splines are enabled, click this dot at the bottom left at your black point, and then you will see an anchor show up here. Just move the anchor and bring it down. I'm just gonna create a very gradual S curve here, making the dark points a bit darker. And I'm also going to make my bright points a bit brighter. And that's my before and that's my after, that's my before and that's my after. It's a very imperceptible pop that this, is, that this contrast curve is giving us. And the fourth and the last step is to bring some focus into the person of interest in this frame. Here it's the girl. So all I'm gonna do is add a vignette to make sure that she is the brightest part of the image. Create a new serial node and add a power window. Just adding a circular power window, make it elongated, something like this, feather it quite a bit, and then invert the power window and decrease the exposure of the outside. So that's your before and that's your after. Your before and your after. It's a subtle pop. And here's the entire image. Your before and your after. Your before and your after. So what this gives you is a four step simple plan that you can just repeat on any video clip in the future. And to prove that it's possible on any clip, so here's this image, it's quite washed out. It's a very neutral looking image. So I'm gonna add a initial node, call this my black node, another node, this is my white node, another node, this is my midtones, another one for my saturation, one for my custom curves, and one for my power window, cool. So let's start with the black point. Where's my blacks at? My blacks are in the shadow here, right behind our neck. And as you can see, it's already quite well balanced. My, my reds are a little elevated, but that's kind of expected because you're looking at the area near her skin and her uh, brunette hair, which already has quite a bit of red in it. So you would expect that area to be red. Maybe these shadows here, these shadows are going to have to be neutral and you can already see that they are neutral. So there's actually nothing to do with the blacks. What I might do is, like last time, I like to keep my shadows really dark. So I'm gonna bring these black areas all the way down. So I'm just gonna bring my lift down until it stops there, somewhere here, so that it's not clipping. My next is my white. Let's find a neutral white area in this image. Very conveniently, she has a white shirt on, so we can use that as our guide. If I were to hover over her collar area, you'll see that the, the blues are elevated and the greens are elevated and the reds are suppressed. It's making the image look very cold without too much life in it. And, and that's what we wanna do. We wanna add some life to this image. Let's take the gain wheel and let's start adding some reds into it. And we'll balance the whites. Constantly keep checking to make sure you've not gone overboard. We are almost there. It's, it's, you don't need to do too much to balance these things. It's, it's almost there. Here's before and here's after. Here's before and here's after. And next, I'm gonna increase my exposure. It looks a little too dark, so I'm just gonna increase my gain. And I'm gonna compensate by decreasing my gamma. So increase my gain, bring up the exposure quite a bit. And to fix 
the exposure that I've increased, I'm going to go to my midtones and I'm going to decrease my gamma. So something like this. And as soon as you've started decreasing your midtones, you see that the saturation starts going up and it starts bringing some life into the image, just like we saw last time. The next thing I want to do is I want to balance my midtones. So I'm just looking for a midtone area for us to compare. And as you can see, it's, it's probably already quite well balanced here. Uh, the reds are a little higher than the blues. So maybe I can just play with that, make it more nominal. Okay, perfect. So now I have my blacks balanced, my whites are balanced and my midtones are balanced. And like last time, I'm just going to collapse these three into a single compound node. So next is saturation. Let's start saturating it and go to a place where it looks really bad and start pulling it back. And always when doing saturation, make sure your vector scope is on so that you're not clipping. Okay, for me, this looks okay to me. And the other thing I'm going to quickly do is I'm just going to create another node here just to make sure my skin tones are correct in color. Go to the qualifier, make sure your highlight is on and just select your skin tones and bang, the skin tone is on the skin tone line. So I have my balance perfect. So I don't need this node anymore. That looks good enough to me. Next, custom curves. Go into the curves node, go into curves, make sure your editable splines are on and simply create a very subtle S. I think our contrast was already good enough, so there was not much to do. Here's the before and here's the after. Here's the before and here's the after. And the last step is to add a power window. So let's go to the power window, remove the highlights, invert the power window and decrease the exposure outside. And there you have it. This is the before and that's the after. So that's the before and that's the after. Now, hopefully you're confident the next time you enter the color page that you have a plan of action in mind. Now watch this video next. It's an in-depth tutorial in how to read a vector scope, why a vector scope looks like that, why does it work that way, and what do the different boxes in a vector scope mean? It's just about 20 minutes long, but trust me, it's worth your 20 minutes.